Now we have class type and downloaded all the data we need. The next step is to convert the OTU data, the OTU consensus sequences into sequence alignments. We are going to use Genius to do that. Let's take a look at our folder. We're going to do this as an example on the Coleopteras. And we have in here the Coleoptera all cons cluster majority faster file. Those are the OTU consensus sequences that Primer Miner has generated for us. We are also going to use the Coleoptera Mito file here, which contains all the mitochondrial C01 sequences. We're going to use this as a backbone to map the OTU sequences against. So let's open up Genius. And in here we can import these two files per drag and drop. This asks us if those are nucleotide sequences and we say yes, they are. And you can select the Coleoptera Mito file, which are the C1 sequences from the mitochondrial genomes. And we go on align assemble, multiple align, and align those with the MAFT alignment tool on default settings. We can then click on the consensus and we want to have this one a 25% consensus sequence. So we retain some variability we have in the sequences down here. Let's click on extract and call this Coleoptera Mito 25%. We can next go ahead and map our reads against these consensus sequence here. We do this by going to go on map to reference. And then here you want to select high sensitivity medium. For very large data sets, you could even go on medium sensitivity. If you go on highest sensitivity, it takes way too long. So usually this is fine. We can click on OK and it will map the reads to the reference sequence. Let's zoom in in here. And you might notice one thing, that one sequence has quite a lot of vowel bases. So this looks a bit strange and cannot be right. It's sequence 17. Let's quickly take a look at the raw data. So if we go on research, you find here the cluster faster folder, and then here we have the alignment of each OTU which research generated. So we can import this into Genius. And if you take a look at this, you see that research did do some errors by aligning these sequences here. So what we can do is we can try and see if we can fix this problem. We're just going to make a new alignment of this data. And we see that if you align it again, it's now making a lot more sense. We can take this condenser sequence, you want to switch it to majority, and we're going to extract this consensus. You don't have to do this for all the sequences, but sometimes if you have just a few sequences in your assembly, you might want to repair some damaged sequences so you have better data. The rest so far, let's take it in full view, looks fine, so I think we can work with the rest of the data how it is. Let's quickly make a new alignment. So we're first going to go into the raw data, and in here we delete sequence 17, save this one, and then we select the new sequence 17 here and map this against the Coleoptera Mito 25% again. Map to reference with the same settings. We click on OK. And just to have everything clean up a bit, we delete the old file. The next step now would be to take a closer look at the sequences here. And we want to figure out where our primers are actually lying. The easiest way to do this is to take the primer sequence. So we start here, for example, with the LCO primer. We copy this one. And then you go to the edge of the alignment and you press Command F for find. And then here we're going to paste the sequence to search for this primer in our alignment. Let's delete the five 
six-point tail of the primer. So this is a three-point end because sometimes the primers show a lot of mismatches to the sequence data and especially on the former primers on the edges you don't have a lot of sequence data available so it's very difficult to find them if you search for the complete primer sequence. Let's see here if we have any luck. Doesn't look like it. Let's lead a little bit more. And now we can see it did find something here. So we see it only has three sequences at this position. But there's another easy trick, at least for the former region. If we go from the edge here, which has a lot of sequence coverage and count 26 base pairs in this direction, like this, you see we also end up being here. This is because we clipped 26 base pairs in this region on all the sequences. So let's add an annotation for the LCO primer. This one is 25 base pairs long. We go and add annotation and write down LCO. And we switch this to forward as well. Like this. We see here that we still might have some problems on some sequences. Usually you might want to fix this. In this example, I'm not going to go to the sequence five and going to repair this one. For demonstration, I think this is just fine. From here, we're going to go to the other side. And somewhere in this region, we should again have the HCO primer. We can go and copy the HCO sequence. And let's try to find it with searching here. Let's delete some of the bases. Then we're going to go on find and we see it did find something here. So the HCO primer is 26 base pairs long. So we're going to add this as an annotation. Click on OK. And we're going to save the whole document. Next, you want to put your cursor right below the reference sequence on this place here. And then you go down completely and to the other primer. In this case, we want to extract the whole region, including both primer sequences. So we're going to go on extract. And let's call this one Coleoptera Extraction. So this would be a case where we are interested as well in the primer binding side of the HCO and LCO primers. You immediately also see that very often the LCO primer here has not a lot of coverage, so it's almost impossible to build improved versions of this primer because there's not a lot of sequence data available, at least in the example data set we downloaded now. For the HCO side, it most of the times looks a lot better. Let's close this down again. The next thing you realize is that we still have some gaps in here. If you don't see gaps, sometimes you have this one checked in the advanced options. You want to uncheck this and then you see we have some gaps in the sequences and this is caused very often by just a few sequences which have disagreements which cause these gaps. So we see here it's just this one single sequence which is creating this gap in the whole alignment. If you would just export the sequences how they are now, this gap would cause trouble when comparing this alignment from Coleoptera with any other group. So we want to have the same alignment for all the groups. What we have to do now is we need to get rid of these gaps here. You could do this by allow editing and edit those out manually, but this can be quite a lot of work. So the easier solution is to go on tools, strip alignment columns, and go here on at least 99% gaps. We click on OK. And then these alignment columns were stripped. You want to make sure that in this case, the total sequence length is 709. This is the LCO primer, which is 25 base pairs, plus the HCO primer, which is 26 base pairs, and then the standard former barcoding region, which is 658 
base pairs long. So it adds up to 709 base pairs in total. And this should be the length for all your other groups as well of your final alignment. Let's imagine a case where we have a lot of short sequences down here, like these ones here, and just very few sequences which are going into the LCO primer binding region. And this can cause some problems sometimes, but sometimes when you do use the strip alignment columns tool, it can clip away these sequences here because they have lots of gaps down here, which are in fact above 99%. So these sequences here would get clipped away. One possible workaround would be to, let's zoom in here a little bit, to select those few sequences here and you extract them. Let's call this one one. Then you go back to this document here, go and allow editing, remove this one here, save this, and then you can strip the columns from both files and add those gaps in here again afterwards. And then you can copy and paste this as a text faster file later on. But for now, let's uh, create this one again, which we wanted because it worked. So this is our final file. So to visualize this alignment now, you have to save it. So we're going to go and export, select the documents, faster file and let's just save this on the desktop for example and here you want to have the missing ends as gaps and you don't want to have wrap sequence activated we click on ok and now here is the saved file which we can then visualize with primer miner i'm going to show you how this is done in the next tutorial